All right, everybody. Thank you for joining another episode of Training on the Tees. It's Tuesday, January 6, 2015. I hope you all had a happy new year. Today we're going to be talking about power pivot modeling, and we'll be covering some more advanced data modeling techniques to take your models to the next level. Just to give you a little bit about me, I'm TJ Brown. I'm a business intelligence consultant with Pragmatic Works, and I've been working here for a little over three years. I love it here. Uh, we, we're located in Jacksonville, Florida, and the weather's great. And I'm a big fan of struggling football teams like the Florida Gators and the ferocious Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so today we'll be covering three different design patterns for Power Pivot. We'll be covering parent-child hierarchies, which is when your dimension records have a parent attribute. We'll be covering role-playing dimensions, which is when a fact table uses a dimension multiple times in the same fact table. And when you have different references, each of those is a different role, which is why we call them role-playing dimensions. And we'll also cover many-to-many -many relationships. Okay, so our tools for the trade for today are going to be some DAX formula. Um, for our parent-child hierarchies, we're going to learn three new types of formula. Um, we're not going to get too in detail here, but they're going to be the formula path, path item, and path length. And path returns a delimited hierarchy from oldest to youngest. Path item turns a, a particular item in the hierarchy. And path length returns the number of items that, that, <clears throat> that are parent to the current item. So you can use that to find what level you are deep into the hierarchy. For our role-playing dimensions, we'll learn a new DEX formula called use relationship. And the use relationship is the function that we'll use to define how to use an inactive relationship in a power pivot model. And for our many-to-many -many relationships, then we'll also use this formula for our role-playing dimensions. We'll use the calculate function. Now, the calculate function is used to evaluate an expression and to apply a series of filters for it to add additional context to the calculation. And the more experience you get with Power Pivot, the more you'll realize how powerful the calculate function is, and it'll become your best friend. Okay, so let's get started with our demo. Now, if you open up a blank work book. <clears throat> we'll be using the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse for our example. And go ahead and open up your Power Pivot window. I already brought in a date dimension just so I could hide some columns that we're not going to use today, and I created a calendar hierarchy. It, um, some, <clears throat> uh, an assumption I had to make in this webinar, just so we have time to fit everything in, is that you have some level of experience with Power Pivot. And if you need some introductory knowledge to Power Pivot, we have multiple great webinars on our website available for free. Um, just go into our free training section on pragmaticworks.com and search for Power Pivot and you'll find some good stuff there. So go ahead and create your date dimension and we're going to bring in some new tables to this data model. So to get new tables into our data model, we'll go up to the Get External Data section of our Power Pivot window and we'll go to From Database and From SQL Server. And the server I'm going to use is my local host, which is my personal computer. And I have the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse on my local host. So I'm going to give it just a second here. And we're going to use the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. That's AdventureWorks DW 2013. If you have a different version of it, like maybe 2012 or 2008, that should work fine. So I'm going to click Next. Oops, looks like my database changed. 
So I'll click Next. And we're going to select a couple new tables to import. So we use that top radio button and click Next. And we're going to bring in two new tables to our model. We're going to bring in the fact finance table. This is alphabetical order, so scroll down and try to find fact finance. And we can give these friendly names. So we can use spaces in our friendly names, and we're just going to call this table finance. And we're also going to bring in dem organization. So we'll scroll back up, we'll find dem organization, and we'll remove the dem portion of the table. Okay, I'll click on finish and we'll import those tables into our data model. It shouldn't take too long, these tables aren't very big. We'll click close. And right now we're currently looking at the design view of our data model. If you see a grid, up here on the top right hand corner of the home tab in your power pivot screen, you'll see the view section. You can toggle between the data view, which is your grid view, and the diagram view. And we're looking at the diagram view right now. Okay, so we have a finance table here, and this is our fact table. And we're going to do what we normally do with our fact tables, and we're going to hide all of our foreign keys. So I just selected the bottom account key, hold shift, select the finance key, and that'll multi-select all of our foreign keys in that table. Right click, and we'll go to hide from client tools. This should be one of the first things you learn once you're dealing with your Power Pivot models. And I'll move the date dimension to the other side, and we're going to create our relationship between the date dimension and the finance table. To do that, we'll drag date key over to in the finance table over to date key in our date table and Power Pivot will create that relationship. Okay, so also I want us to hide these other key columns in the organization table. We can multi-select by holding control, right click and hide from client tools. Okay, now that we're ready to go I want to toggle over to the grid view, also called the data view. That's in the view section up top. We're in diagram view right now. We're going to click on data view. And this will bring open <clears throat> a grid view of all of our tables. All of our tables are listed here on the bottom. We got date, organization, and finance. We're going to look at organization right now. So click on organization. All right. I'm going to expand this key out and drag this number over to the end. And you can see we have a bunch of organization names. And we can rename that column and add a space to make it a little more user friendly. And you can see that AdventureWorks Cycle has an organization key of one. North America Operations has an organization key of two, but it also has a parent organization key of one. That means this is pretty much an organizational map of the AdventureWorks Corporation. So we have the corporation name up top, and we have different little divisions in our organization. And these are going by continent, and they're going down a hierarchy, and they'll actually get down to the country level. So the first thing that we're going to need to do to make a parent-child hierarchy is to define the full path of our hierarchy. And to do that, we're going to make a calculated column. So I'm going to click on organization name and select that, and we're going to insert a column right before then. So I'll right-click and choose Insert Column. And now we have a space for a calculated column, and we're going to use one of our new functions. So every formula starts with an equal sign. Everybody that is familiar with Excel should know that. And we're going to use the new path function. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that the path function takes two parameters, the ID of your table and the parent ID. So it, it'll use that, those two key values to give you a full representation of your hierarchy for a given row. So 
our ID here is going to be our organization key. We can just click in, inside the column and it will fill it out for us, organization key. We'll do comma space and we'll do our parent organization key by clicking in there. I'll do a close paren to end the function and I'll zoom in here in case you missed any of that. That's path, organization key, comma, parent organization key. Okay. We'll click the checkbox or press enter and then we'll evaluate our new column. And I'm going to rename our column and we're going to call it HPATH. And HPATH pretty much means hierarchy path. So if we zoom in here, you can kind of see what we're talking about. The organization for North America is, has the key of two and its parent is adventure work cycle. So you can see the path goes one to two. Now if we look over here at the central division, its key is five and its parent's 14. So five and 14 and the parent of 14 is two, which is in North America, and its parent is one, which is AdventureWorks. So we have the full representation of the hierarchy path in our new HPATH column. Now this column isn't very useful by itself, so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select hide from client tools. And this is going to hide it from our user view. We're not going to drag this into a pivot table. We're going to use this column to kind of drive some other calculations in our model and it's going to be useful indirectly. Okay? All right. So Power Pivot itself can't create a relationship between one table and itself. So we can't drag a relationship between organization key and parent organization key. So what we need to do is we need to actually naturalize this hierarchy. So <clears throat> you can see in our HPATH column we have multiple levels in our hierarchy and none of these actually go beyond level four. So we're going to make four different columns for each level of our hierarchy. Um, as a best practice in the real world, you know, it's possible that maybe you have a need to have additional layers in your hierarchy. So when you build out your model, you might want to build a couple additional layers just to give you that room for growth in your hierarchy. But for now, we're just going to do four. So I want you to click on currency key, and right click, and insert a column. And we're going to do that three more times. We're going to insert a total of four calculated columns. They're all going to be blank. Okay, and before we create our calculations, we're going to name these columns. So I'm going to click X because we're not filling out that formula. We're going to rename this column. So right click on it and go to rename column. We're going to call this level one. We'll call this column, right click, rename column. We'll call this column level two. And does anybody want to guess what we're going to call this one? You guessed right. It's level three, and we'll do level four. Okay. So now I want us to click in a cell of level one, and we're going to create a calculation for this column. So click inside a cell, and then click up in the formula bar, and we're going to make a new formula. So all of our formulas start with equals, and we're going to use the lookup value function. Autocomplete can help us out. If I type in look, you can see we have lookup value here. And I can hit tab. And the IntelliSense is going to automatically fill it out for me, except for the parameters, of course. And let's zoom in here. <clears throat> so lookup value functions kind of like a join in T-SQL or like a VLOOKUP in Excel. So what it's going to do, it's going to return a result, and you'll define the result column name, like what value you're going to look up. And you're going to look in one column for a match of a search value. And you can put multiple search columns and values in here, but we're only going to use one. So we're just going to fill out this portion. Okay. 
So the, the result that we're going to look up is our organization name. So I can just click in here, and it'll fill out organization name for me. You can type an open bracket and type it in yourself if you'd like. And the column that we're going to search in is going to be the key column of our table. And for this table, that key column is organization key. So I clicked in there, and it fills out the organization key for me. And I'll put comma. And now we're going to need to tell you, we're going to need to tell the formula what value we want to match on. And this is going to be a derived value using one of our new DAX formula. It's going to be, we're going to use path item to get that value. So I'll start typing path, and we'll go to path item. And I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see the path item function takes a path, which will be a hierarchy path, which we just made in our new column H path. We're going to give it a position. And we, we can also define a type. This is optional. Uh, this parameter will be a, a zero if you want to compare text values. And if you don't fill one in, it'll default to zero. And it'll be one if you want to have a integer value. And since we're going to match on key columns, which are whole numbers, we're going to choose an integer value. So we'll have a type of one that we'll hard code. Okay. So we'll do path item, and we'll use our age path column. So I'll just click in this age path column, and this is level one. So we're going to look for one, for a position value of one. We talked about our type. Since we want an integer value, we're going to do one here for our type. We're going to do some close parentheses to end our path item. And we're going to do one more, and that will end our lookup value. You can see we got the bolded paren for the end of our lookup value, beginning and end. And then we can click on enter or the check mark, and it'll evaluate our formula. Now you can see we have a whole bunch of adventure work cycles here. That's because it's the root of our whole hierarchy. Um, that's going to change once we get to level two. So I'm going to leave us here on the formula for a second in case you didn't get it. We have lookup value. We're looking up the organization name, and we're going to find that organization name by looking in the organization key column for a particular path of position one. Now we're going to use the same formula structure for our different levels. We're just going to change the position name. Okay. So I hope you had time to get that, but we'll redo it here. We'll start with equals and lookup value. The result we're looking up is our organization name. We can just click in there for that. We're searching in our key column. And the value we're going to get from our path function, our path item function. I apologize. And the path item is going to take our hierarchy path, our H path column. And now we're doing level two. So we're going to look for a position of two. And we're going to do the type of one, which is integers, close paren close print again to end lookup value, and press enter. Now you can see for North America operations, its parent is 1 and its level is 2. So level 2 we have North America operations, and level 1 we have adventure work cycle. Now some of these get a little deeper. The Canadian division is in North America, North America, which is two, which is under AdventureWorks cycle for one. Okay? So let's repeat that process for level three and level four. We'll start to move a little faster as we go. So we're going to do equals, lookup value. We're looking up the organization name with a search value, with a search column. We're searching in organization key. 
and we'll do a comma, and we're searching for the value that's going to be represented by our path item function. The path item function is going to take the hierarchy path column, and now we're going to define our position, and we're filling out level three now, so we'll use three, and it's going to be a type of one. We'll do two close parens, and you can see for central division, we're getting further down the hierarchy. The central division is actually the fourth level, which we're about to do. Okay, so click in level four. We'll do equals, look up value. We're looking up the name by looking in the key column, organization key, and we're looking for the value of the path item function, which uses the H path calculated column, and we're doing level four with a type of one, close paren, close paren. Now we have our fourth level. So if you're an ETL developer, you may notice that we have some blank values in here for values that don't exist, and that's not a best practice in data warehousing, and it's actually going to cause problems in our Power Pivot model too. But we'll look at the results of this, and we'll see what the problems are and how we can resolve it in our Power Pivot data model. Okay? So now we have all four levels. We're ready to create our hierarchy. So I'm going to flip over to diagram view, and we'll click on our organization table and click on maximize just to make it a little bigger. We're going to create a new hierarchy by clicking on that orange button for create hierarchy. And we're going to name the hierarchy organization drill down. Okay, so now we're going to add all the levels to our hierarchy. That's very easy. We're, we'll select one, we'll hold control, select two, three, and four, and we'll right click, go to add to hierarchy, and organization drill down. It's that new hierarchy that we created. Click on enter. And let's just double check we have the right order here, and it looks like we do not. Uh, we got one, two, four, three. So let's click on three, drag it up, and it's that easy to change um, the structure of your hierarchy. It's just drag and drop. Okay, so we got our hierarchy created. Let's create a, <clears throat> a measure in our fact table that we're going to report on. So let's go back to data view. And on the far left here, we'll do, we'll make a measure called finance sales. Or, nope, sorry, this is not our finance table. This is our finance table on the bottom here. And we'll just click on amount and do an auto sum, and we'll get our sum of amount. We'll quickly change the data type by going to format and format it as a currency. And we got our new measure here, and we can hide amount. Okay, so let's, you, let's insert a pivot table into our workbook. And right up here, we have a pivot table dropdown. We can do this to insert a pivot table or a chart. We're going to do a table. And we'll use this existing worksheet. And we'll name this sheet PC for parent-child hierarchy. And under organization, we'll insert our organizational drill down into rows. And for finance, we'll do sum of amount, and that'll go to values. And you'll be able to see our new drill down. Okay, that 
looks pretty fun. We got France, and we got a blank value here. Now remember we talked about blank values before, and we're going to have to handle those in our data model. However, you should notice that this is more of a cosmetic blemish in our model because this European operations member here has the correct sum of France and Germany. So everything adds up fine. We're just kind of working with the visualization component at this point. Okay? So let's work to fix those. So let's flip back over to our Power Pivot model by clicking the green Manage button in your Power Pivot tab. And let's go to our organization table. And let's go to level two. <clears throat> and I want you to put your cursor right after the equal sign. Okay? I'm going to mess with my zoom a little bit here. Eek. Okay. Now, better to do this not zoomed and I'll zoom in, not zoom in at the end. Okay? So we're just going to add a if statement. And anybody that's used Excel formulas should have used the if statement before. So the if, we're going to do a logical test. And we're going to use one of our new functions. It's going to be our path length. So we'll start typing in path length. And path length takes in a parameter of each path, or of a path, which is our H path column. So we'll just click in H path, close paren, and if that is greater than or equal to two, then we'll do a comma, and then we'll use our formula here. But if it's less than it, we're going to do an alternate result by putting a comma at the end of our formula, and we're doing the result if false in our if statement. And if that's false, we're not going to use the level 2 value because that's blank. We're going to use the parent value, and the parent of level 2 is level 1. So we can just click on level 1 here and do a close paren and enter. Okay. You... <coughs> You should notice that we have no more blanks in this column. So for AdventureWorks, it'll repeat on level two. Now we're going to re replicate that logic for level three and four. But first, I'm just going to recap it for us. If the path length is greater than or equal to two, we're going to use our formula for our level two value. But if we don't have one, the path is going to be less than that. And then we're going to use our level one value, which is the parent value for level two. Okay, so we're going to replicate this logic, and the only thing we're going to change is that two um, for level three. We'll use three, and the parent of level three is not going to be level one. The parent of three is going to be two. Okay, we're ready to do that. <clears throat> so let's click on level three and. We'll wrap this lookup value in an if statement. If our path length function with our path value is greater than or equal to 3, then we'll use the function for level 3. But if it's not, we'll use level 2. We don't have to type the level 2 function we can just ref reference the level two column. Enter. And now we have our level three. And we're gonna do the same thing for level four. So if the path length of H path is greater than or equal to four, because we're on level four now, comma, we're going to do our lookup value function, but if it's not, we're going to use the parent of four. And the parent of four is the level three. Close paren. Now we have all of our values filled out. We have no more blanks in any level in our hierarchy. I'm going to zoom in on that formula one more time in case you didn't get it. This is level four. So we're doing if 
the path length for our hierarchy is greater than or equal to 4, we're doing our lookup value function. But if it's not, we're going to use level 3, which is the parent of 4. Okay, so we modified the values in our hierarchy. Let's flip over to our pivot table and look what that and see what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, so now you see that we have no more blank values. However, we do have a different problem here. We got France is repeated after. <clears throat> France goes all the way to the end of level 4 hierarchy, when in fact, France is a level 3. So we need to do some a little additional logic, but I do want to note that this is a cosmetic change. When we collapse this, 66,000 plus 30, we're going to get 97,000. So the numbers match up, we're just making the hierarchy browse and visualize the way we want it to. Okay, but we're going to fix this problem. So we're going to need a couple tools to fix this. So basically, when you logically think about what we want to do here, is we only want the values in our hierarchy for when the actual path of a node, like Francis the third level, is less than or equal to the browsing depth because this we're trying to browse to level 4 of this hierarchy when level 4 doesn't exist so we want to we want to know only <clears throat> values for a level in our hierarchy that does exist and we're going to need a couple tools to do that so let's flip back over to power pivot Okay, flip back over to Power Pivot by clicking on the green Manage button. <clears throat> and let's create a new calculated column. I'm going to insert this column before our organization name. And this, this column it's going to be defined by path length. We're just going to do equals path length, and we use this function in our other formula for our levels, and it takes a parameter of our path, which is our H path column. Close print. And let's rename this column. And we're going to call this column node level. Okay, so let's look at this. You can see that North America Operations is the second level in our hierarchy. The Northeast Division is the fourth level. So it, it should have a organization key of three, which it does. Okay. That's not that useful by itself, but let's bring it into our pivot. And <clears throat> we have this summarizing, but you can see that France actually has a node level of three, but we're going down to the fourth node level. So we're going to use that, that value to help us a little bit later, but we need one more function of that. We need to find out when we actually want to hide a member, and that's when our browsing depth is too deep. Okay, So let's make a calculated column for our browsing depth. Okay, So to make a calculated column, we use this bottom pane here that, that are below our column values. And you can use any cell that you want to. But click in a cell and click up in the formula bar. And we'll put, put in our function for browsing depth. 
we're going to call this filtered depth colon equals and we're going to use the is filtered function is filtered return returns a true or false value okay so if we're if we're filtered on level 1 that'll return true or false however there's a little trick here involved if you can actually add the values of is filtered together and instead of text true or false if you try to add them together you're going to get the binary values 0 or 1 0 for false and one for true. So if you want to know what depth you're browsing in our hierarchy, we can just add up all the zeros and ones for your current browse depth. So we can do our is filtered function and add it to each level of our hierarchy. So I'm doing level two here. Close paren plus is filtered. For level three, plus is filtered for level four. All right, we'll do a close print and click enter. Oh, looks like we missed something. Yep, we got a comma here when we don't need a comma. And click on enter. And the default value is zero here because we're not actually browsing in a pivot table. However, if we look at our pivot table, we'll remove node level and we'll add our new filter depth. And you can see that for European operations, one, it's repeated here, and we can fix that. But also, our filter depth is going to go <clears throat> all the way to level four when this is really has a node, node value of three. Okay? So how do we get it to hide? That's going to be our last challenge in this project. We're going to go back to our power pivot model. And we're going to make a custom calculated measure. And we're going to leverage the fact that we know that pivot tables only present values that are not blank. So if we can manipulate the measure to be blank when we don't want to see it, then we only have to have it appear in our pivot table when it's actually valid. Okay. So we want to do this for our finance amount. And we're going to make a new calculated measure, and you can make it right under filter depth. We'll call this organization amount, because this is the amount that's going to work in our hierarchy, our parent-child hierarchy. OK? So we'll do organization amount, colon equals, to start the function. And we're going to use the if statement. And if the maximum value of our node level column, and the max function in this context is going to give us the node level that we're browsing to in our pivot. So if that maximum is less than our filter depth, which we just made, and we can reference this calculated measure and our current one so we can reuse this code and kind of stack calculations on top of each other. So if that max node level is less than the filter depth, we're gonna, it's not going to be valid. And we can make a blank value with the blank function. It's just blank and open close paren. We'll do a, our comma for our result if false. And if it's false, it's valid. So then we just want our sum of finance amount. Now I'll do a close paren to end the sum and another close paren to end the if statement and press enter. Make this column a little wider so we can see it. 
and we'll format it as a currency. So I'm going to zoom in to this function, in case you didn't get it. We have if the maximum node level, the actual node level for a current row and a pivot is less than or equal to <clears throat> the browse depth. We want the value for that measure to be blank, so it hides. And if it is valid, we're going to just do the sum of the finance amount. Okay. So let's add this to our pivot. So we have organization amount here. And you can see this last member of France that's not valid has a value here, but does not have a value here. So <clears throat> when we remove the old amount, and we're just going to be left with our organizational amount that we made, you can see our hierarchy adjusts itself, and we're only going to get values for members that are valid in our hierarchy. Okay, so this is working perfectly. All right, that concludes our section on parent-child hierarchies. Now we're going to do role-playing dimensions. So we're going to bring in some new tables to our model. I'll flip over to Design View from Database, SQL Server, Adventure Works. And we're going to do Fact Internet Sales. We'll do a friendly name of Internet Sales. And we'll do dim sales reason. And we'll do fat internet sales reason. We definitely need a friendly name there to make that readable. Click on Finish and bring those tables into our model. Okay. So now <clears throat> we have our fact internet sales fact table. And I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to make a relationship between order date and the date key. And when we make our first relationship, we can see that this is the active value. It has the active check mark right here. We're also going to do the shift date key over to date key. And when we make a second relationship between the tables, we'll have a dotted line here. And that dotted line represents the inactive relationship. You can see that the check mark is not there. Okay? So let's flip over to grid view. Let's go to internet sales. And we'll make a calculated measure. And this calculated measure, after I hide these key columns, and this calculated measure will be called order quantity, or quantity ordered. And this is just going to be an easy sum of our order quantity. And since the order date key is our active relationship, it's going to use that relationship for this value. We can format that to a whole number with a comma. We can add that into a pivot table. So we'll insert a pivot table into a new worksheet. And for internet sales, we'll add the quantity ordered. And I'll use my previously created date hierarchy. However, what if we wanted to use <clears throat> the quantity measure 
with the inactive relationship of quantity shipped. We're going to need some special calculation to do that. So if we want quantity shipped, let's create a new calculated measure. And we're going to use the calculate function because calculate is how we apply additional context to an expression. So in the calculate function for expression, we're going to do sum of the order quantity. And we're going to define the relationship with our filter. So to define a relationship, to use an active relationship, we'll use the use relationship function. And we'll use the ship date key. And for our second parameter, we'll use the date key in our date table. Close paren for use relationship and another close paren for calculate. And we'll do enter. Looks like we got an error here. Um, Let's do internet sales ship date key. And it wanted a table reference for that. And we'll make this a whole number and do a comma. And voila, we have <clears throat> a measure that will use our inactive relationship. So let's go to our new measure and add that into our pivot. And you can see orders come in and we don't ship them out quite as fast as we get them in. We gotta wait for, you know, them to be ready and prepared. So these ordered quantities are a little higher than our ship quantities, but that's kind of expected. So that's how you use a <clears throat> inactive relationship. And you can do that to support role plane dimensions with your measures. So we'll rename this sheet role. And now we'll do many to many relationships. So let's flip back over to our power pivot model. And let's talk about many-to-many -many relationships. There is a many-to-many -many relationship between the sales reason and internet sales. The sales reason in this database is kind of like our marketing campaigns. And the thing is, you could attribute more than one or possibly more than one marketing campaign or sales reason to a given sale or a collection of sales. So you have a many to many relationship here. And because of that, you can't create a direct relationship between the sales reason. That's why we use a bridge table. That's what internet sales reason is. Now internet sales has a collection of key values I'll flip over to grid view, and it has order number and order line number and sales reason key. Now sales reason key is the primary key of our dimension table, sales reason. And in our internet sales table, we can see that order number and order line number create a unique record for our order, okay? So we're gonna create a composite key here that'll be one value to represent a order line number. So we'll insert a column. And this column's going to be equal to our sales order number. And ampersand is how we do a concatenation. And a string value of a pipe. Another ampersand to concatenate that order number with our sales order line number. Okay, I'll do enter, and we'll name this to order reason key. And we can hide this value, and we're going to do the same thing in our internet sales reason table. So we can click into the add column space, we'll do equal to our sales order number, and concatenate that with a pipe, and concatenate that with our line order line number. 
Okay. We'll call this order reason key also. Now we have the columns that we need that we can create our relationships between the two tables. So let's flip over to diagram view. And in our internet sales table, we can connect, if we scroll to the bottom, we can connect our order reason key to our order reason key in our internet sales table. And now we have a relationship between our bridge table and our dimension table. Now we can hide our bridge table completely from client tools because we won't be reporting on that. It's just going to drive our calculations. So now I want to insert a new pivot table. And we'll do this in a new worksheet. We'll call this worksheet M2M for many to many. And before we do this, we're going to make one additional calculation. So let's flip over to grid view and our internet sales table. And we'll make a calculation called in internet sales. And that's going to be a simple sum of our sales amount column. We'll format that as a currency. And now we'll add that to our pivot table. So we'll find our internet sales. And now let's use our many to many dimension. We'll use the t sales reason type and sales reason name. And you can see we get this little error message, not error message, but it's a warning that pops up that says relationships between tables may, need, may be needed. We actually have relationships, however, if we scroll over to our pivot, we can see that the relationship is not being used. It's pretty much summing the all value for every member of the dimension. So it's not using our many-to-many -many relationship at all. So how do we do that? Let's flip back over to Power Pivot by clicking on the green Manage button. Let's go back to our Internet Sales table. And how do we apply additional context to a calculation? We covered that a little bit earlier, but to refresh your memory, we use the calculate function. So we're going to use calculate to provide additional context to our sum of sales amount. So we'll do comma and enter in one filter. And this filter is going to be very easy. It's just going to be the table name for internet sales reason, which is our bridge table. So just put in your bridge table name, uh, surrounded by single ticks, close the calculate, and now let's flip back over to our pivot table. Now you can see, like magic, um, our filter context is applied. So all these marketing campaigns <clears throat> are adding up appropriately and the sales amounts being filtered accordingly. Okay, so we covered a lot of stuff today. We covered many to many relationships, role playing dimensions, and parent child hierarchies. We learned some cool stuff. Uh, hopefully, if any of this stuff has given you trouble before, you, were, you managed to learn it today. Um, just to recap, my name is TJ Brown. I work at Pragmatic Works. Um, if, if you want to ask me any questions about today's webinar, hit me up on at SQLTJ on, on Twitter. If you have uh, any project concerns, we do consulting work. And we also make a whole host of SQL Server products to make your SQL Server, SQL Server development a lot easier. We also do training. If you want to bring us into your organization for some direct training, um, also contact sales at PragmaticWorks.com. Tammy, do you want to close this out? Absolutely. Do you have time for some questions, or would you prefer to answer those in a blog? Uh, I have time. Okay. Sure. There's a couple of questions that we have. Why do you right-click and do hide from client tools? Also, do you ever just hit delete? 
Okay, so we actually might need some of those columns in our <coughs> data model. So like those key values, we hide them because we don't want them to show up in our show fields list in our pivot table because we're not going to report on them. However, we still need them in our model because we use those columns to, to create our relationships. So we need them there, we just don't really want to look at them on the front end, and that's why we hide as opposed to delete. Um, if you had a key column there that you weren't actually using the related dimension for, then it's fine to go ahead and delete it. Just be careful and make sure you, make sure you really don't need it. Okay. Uh, one attendee asked if this session was recorded and available for later reference. Yes, it is, and it will be made available to you by the end of this week. You can get that on our Pragmatic Works dot com website, select training, then select free training. Uh, another question, would another option be to create a dimension table for the org hierarchy? Well, the, or, the hierarchy is going to be in your actual organization table. Um, if you could restructure your dimension to actually have it naturalized, if it wasn't a parent child, definitely do that. Um, it's preferred to have it naturalized automatically. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question appropriately. But the reason why parent-child hierarchies sometimes exist is because <clears throat> for a given record, uh, it might have a different number of paths, uh, a different number of, le of levels in the hierarchy. Um, some nodes may only go down one or two, some paths might go down three or four, and that's why we do it with a parent-child hierarchy. Um, okay. I hope I answered your question. If I didn't, um, you know, if you can send Tammy an email, she'll give it to me, or hit me up at, at SQL TJ, maybe I can answer it a little bit, a little bit more clearly. Okay. Is the performance worse if, if okay. create hierarchies in Power Pivot versus in SQL Server? No. no the, you, anything you create in SQL Server, you're going to have to <clears throat> bring into Power Pivot. Um, if you have a data model that you're going to put on on a SSAS tabular model, um, you're going to have to find a way of working around what we learned today. Um, those H path, the path queries are not going to work on SSAS tabular. That's only for Power Pivot. Uh, actually, you can you can use it in SSAS tabular, but you just can't use it with direct query mode. Okay. They also asked if you could click on the HPath cell so they can see that formula again. Sure. Let me flip back over to it. So. And we'll go to the organization table and HPath. So the HPath function just takes the key column of the current record and the parent as the second parameter. And they're separated by a comma. Hope that helps. All right. Okay. Uh, are these new functions only for Excel 2013 or are they present in Excel 2010 with Power Pivot? Um, these are for Power Pivot, and they'll be available in 2010 and 2013. So, 2010 Professional Plus Plus. So, anything after 2010. Okay. In your if formula you just wrote, you wanted to wanted it to be blank if true. Instead of using B L A C N N K paren, could you have just typed a double quotes for a BLACNK as you would in Excel. Um, so I may be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that double quotes or two double quotes is going to be an empty string. And I think an empty string is actually a value. 
but I may be wrong there. Um, if you experiment with it yourself and find the results, um, go ahead and tweet at me, at SQL TJ, but blank is going to be your best bet there. Um, if you want to swap the values for true and false, what I would do is alter your greater than or equal expression to just flip those two um, conditions around. Okay. Will you post this code, i.e. worksheet, somewhere, maybe on your blog? Yes. Um, SQLTJ.com is my blog. I should have that on this slide, but I don't. Um, hold on one second. SQLTJ.com, and I'll post the workbooks up there for you. Okay. How well does the path DAX scale to hierarchies with levels greater than 15 at over 200,000 rows in a dimension? Uh, I think it's going to matter how wide your dimension is for how, for how big it is, but it does scale very well. Um, the good thing about those hierarchy values is that there are a lot of duplicates values in the column, and since PowerPivot uses column store indexing kind of internally into PowerPivot, having all those duplicate values compresses really well. So you should be able to get that into your model, but it really just depends on the size of your overall workbook. Okay, and will you be, be making Okay, and will you be making this Excel uh, worksheet available as well? Yes, yes. SQLTJ.com. SQLTJ.com. Okay. Then the next question we have, um, Noah Meyer is kudoing you, saying, awesome presentation, TJ. I'm seriously impressed with how much you covered in less than an hour. Thank you, Noah. I really appreciate that. Um, one of the great things about Power Pivot is that you can really do some rapid modeling. So you can do a lot of work and lot of, not a lot of time. That's what makes um, Power BI and our pit bit so beneficial for your organization. What version I really of appreciate the compliment. <laughs> what version of Power Pivot was this using? I think I'm completely updated to the most up to date version. So if you just look on the Microsoft website for Power Pivot, you'll get the same version that I'm using. I don't know the exact version number of Power Pivot. The Excel version I'm using is 2013. Okay. Another question. Pivot table showing shipped order for 2014 was higher than orders taken. Is that an error or could it be just database example? Um, if we're talking about the different the different orders for the role playing dimension, um, they are go going to be different for each given date. Um, you'll notice that the orders come in before you can, you can actually all ship them out. So the ordered value tends to be a little higher. Okay, so and that's, I, that's kind of to be expected, but it is test data. Test and how many rows can be pulled up using Power Pivot in 10 minutes approximately? Uh, I don't know. I think that's going to depend a lot more on your network connection and how wide your rows are. So that's probably <clears throat> really dependent on your organizations and where the actual data is located and what servers you're pulling from. Okay. Uh, Ivan says this was exactly what he was looking for and hopes he can watch it again. Yes, you can. It will be available. Uh, it was recorded and will be available on our website by the end of this week. You can get it at www.pragmaticworks.com slash training slash free training. And I believe we have just a couple of more questions. Uh, let's see. Antonio would like to kudo you as well, TJ. Congratulations for the session. Very practical. What would be your advice on parent-child relationships with an unlimited number of levels? Is it possible to implement in a tabular model? Um, in a tabular model, you're, you're going to have to define your maximum level and have a column for every level. 
um, if you can make a hierarchy not parent child in your data model, um, that would probably be the best way to do it. But for your tabular model, you're going to have to have a column for each level. And like I said before, one of the best practices is is if you're going to be expanding that hierarchy later, you know, maybe our max for this example is four, but maybe you make columns for five, six, and seven just to give yourself a little leeway. Okay. Uh, just a couple more. We won't keep you. We know you're very busy. Can the child and parent columns be from different tables in a path function? Um, it's going to have to have row level context in that particular table. So I believe you're going to have to have it in the same table. Okay. How much workloads PowerPivot can handle? PowerPivot can hold a ton of data. Um, it uses a proprietary compression technology called X-Velocity, and that'll shrink your data um, from like one half to one third of its original size. Um, how well it compresses is going to depend on how many duplicates you have in your columns, um, but for data warehouses and reporting type denormalized databases, it's going to shrink really well. So <clears throat> the limitation of it is going to be, since it's in memory, um, it's going to depend, and your power pivot model is going to depend on the RAM and your local machine. Okay. Okay. And you can scale that up by deploying to SharePoint or SSAS tabular. All right, just a couple more. In earlier versions of Power Pivot, my understanding was that a key column could only have a single relationship. Has that changed? Um, no, um, a key column can be <clears throat> can be used in a relationship with more than one dimension. I'm not sure why you'd want it to, um, but <clears throat> for, like for role-playing role dimensions with a date key, the date key and the dimension is going to connect to more than one column in your fact table. Um, what you might be thinking about is the concept of it, it, you can only have one active relationship at a time. And the reason we use the use relationship function is to define the inactive relationship when we actually want to use the inactive relationship. Because if you don't do that, you pretty much can't use the inactive relationship at all without changing your model. Okay. Any recommendations for RAM using Power Pivot? 5 million rows to 15 columns? Five million rows? Mm, with 15 um, columns. I, I definitely, rec yeah, definitely recommend to be on 64-bit version of Excel and with at least 8 to 12 gigabytes of RAM on your computer. Um, it's really going to depend on your particular database. So, you know, test it out. Um, make sure you close other applications that are running to maximize your RAM that's available. And if you can't scale out there, you can always build a tabular model and SQL Server analysis services. Okay, and our very last question, what was the name of compression type? Uh, columns, it uses column store indexing and X velocity. X velocity is the proprietary name for the technology. And you can research that a little more on Microsoft's website. Awesome. We thank you so much, TJ, for your time.